about YouTube, Joby from Oz here. So today, the Mighty Wrong Fu, part two. I have jumped ahead, given the table a good clean. Got that back on, reassembled. The last of the horrible smelly stuff. Just doing the uh, preparation for reassembly of the quill. Various other bits and pieces on the table. So, essentially, I've still got the motor to put back on, the quill assembly and the front cover to put back on, and then the uh, power switch. Probably clean the column up before I finish. And, should be ready to uh, see how she looks. Quick trip through to the workshop. Everybody else is hard at work. B1 and B2. B1 on the lathe, no. B1 tramming in a vice. And B2 milling some holes. Ah, oh, I'm about to get my head beaten in. Okay. That is the look up the quill. There's certainly a bit of surface crap on that taper. So I do have a Morse 3 reamer. So I'm going to ream that, bring it back into spec before I run any tooling up there. But today's mission is not that. Today's mission is merely to reassemble the beast. So as far as the quill assembly goes, taper roller bearings at the top, got a keyway in the side. This is our front. Quill gap stop. We've got a rack at the back, and we have a bump stop for the bottom. As we look inside the head, take a few bits of footage up inside just in case anybody's ever wanting to see what's in there. That's the uh, top casting where the drive comes through from the pulley. In behind the back, there's in behind here just an open casting. What we're planning to do is drill some holes through this casting. Don't know what else is going to be of use in a moment. Um, this is where our quill clamp goes through. This is where our pin to lock the quill is going in here. So, lubrication and reassemblage. Okay, so I've squeezed some grease down into the top bearing there, made sure there's liberal grease on the uh, splines and also in the key slot and also on this thread here. using EPL grease to give it a bit of a go and now should we see if I can do this left handed I'm going to take a step back and actually oh yeah So we have full feed, 
Lobra Cashon. In APO, we've got a bearing of both ends. Okay, so that was our quill feed back in. Spindle. Lovely. Feels pretty. Feels pretty. So the next in here. Grease. I got a keyway. Fury screw. At which point we now have connection and drive, and we now want to put in our for the cool lovely magnetic And that gets locked up. And we should have Secret squirrel business over to the right, which I can't film. And uh, yeah, I'm looking good for the uh, part six video. Once we have a release, this is showing the positional adjuster braider. Positional adjuster braider. Oh yeah. So when you want yours, this is where you go. Whoa.gemtrek.com.shop buy now for your official RF30 verticulator we're going to do some uh, product promotion on this uh, this this piece here of course will be a part three because we can't show you this on part two we need to have a finished product before we can show you what we've seen but I reckon we're somewhere near it what do you reckon Bruce somewhere near it yep <coughs> Do you reckon we're vertical? Ish. Give or take a bit. Yeah. I think um Alright, so progress. We have the motor mounted up. Complete with uh assemblage. Just running the cables to the reversible switch now. The table is all still clean as it was in the last pick. 
and we're very close to being able to spin this around again. So I'm going to spin it up at low speed first. So I've got the pulley smallest to big, smallest to big. Should be the slowest speed of the mill. Got my locking handles in there now, locking the X, locking the Y. Happy days. So yeah, and we're about to drill some holes here to mount up something. All right. So, quick, uh, what's it called? O Osh break. Occupational health and safety says we must have a break every 16 hours. 16 hours? Yeah, every 16 hours I, I must stop the food. I'll never survive that. No. Anyway, so wrong quiz over there. And uh, just about ready to fire it up. It's looking pretty excitement. We've got, got some kebabs, we've got, got some chips. Clothes. All good. And clove. We've, um, we've, made, we've made a trial here. We've still got some work to finesse it, but basically it's a, a kit that we can bolt on easily into a, onto these RF, what is it, RF? RF30. RF30, or to the, uh, well, basically anything with a, with a round um, a round column. Yeah. So we've made a, clamp, a clamping arrangement here. Uh, actually, I'll just bring one, that other one out. Yes. Um, find out where I put it. 608 skate bearings, super tough. Nice big solid bit of bar, secured to the head. We've just got to do an alignment on it, but that's not go. major drama. Yeah, so we've got a two piece, two piece arrangement clamps. that clamps on. The groove here um, goes over the, over the rack, lock into place, lock on there, and then on the other side we can make whatever whatever arrangement we want to, but what we've done here is with two, um, two, uh, two sets of bearings, one either side, so it's friction free, and we've got an adjustment, one of them is set, the other one we've got an adjustment with a grub screw here, a slot at the back, and that can, that can slide it up, and uh, we should be putting these on the market, either as a kit or as um, the drafted parts so that people can produce it we'll um, we'll make these uh, within the allowable uh, easy packaging and people can buy the standard bar uh, to use and so whether it's imperial or metric it won't matter because we've got the adjustment here and uh, we see that that works quite well uh, giving us an accurate drop as we roll it down so it's bringing us up towards the, do the dovetail. It's, it will never be a dovetail type, but what it does mean is if we've got to move from one point to another to get more throat depth on the same job, we're, gonna, we're not going to have to worry about it being in, in the same plane, in the vertical plane. Looks good. Excellent. And so we just got to, this is this is our real first test fit, proof of concept. We've got to tweak this slightly. How we'll go on the RF 46 or the 46 round column, where we'll just take a quick over to your yeah, yeah, have your little hair, Bruce. The same kit of parts. We've got a larger, a longer dimension um, in the vertical plane. This is more travel, um, and that's what we're looking at doing is, is setting this this bar up on there and connecting it with two of these clamps one at the bottom one at the top and i'll go around there so we'll have one at the bottom one at the top the bar in between with a standoff and uh, that will give us also the, the movement up and down because as soon as you release off these bolts and you want to Right, the jacket up or down, it, it wobbles all over the place, and that'll take all that out of there. So we have the so bar we'll solid at the bottom, solid at the top, and the same dual bearing arrangement uh, adjusted up tight on an angle bracket that sits on this piece here. 
So the bar will be constrained to the head, fixed at the top of the bottom. So the head can move, head's where the bearings are, two solid plates. So many, many options with the same kit. Absolutely. And uh, Bruce so is the man to... Buy, uh, you're either going to have to buy the one clamp or a two clamp kit. And pricing, pricing and uh, options to be available soon. Absolutely. If you have any inquiries ahead of time, please let Bruce know at Gemtrek. What is it? Uh, uh, what's that? It's, you can Gemtrek at bigpond. .com. Email in the doobly do. Gem, Gemtrek at bigpond.com. Gemtrek at bigpond.com. So if you think this is something you want to be on the wait list for, let him know now. You'll be the first on the list if you get it through as this video is published. And um, you too can have a round column mill that doesn't lose its uh, rotational position as you lift and lower the head. Yeah, Excellent. Wicked. So, you heard it here first. Gemtrack's latest product for the round column mills. And uh, just to finish off the work on this particular mill, um, today I've finished putting the table back on. Of course, Bruce has gone and made it dirty now. And uh, the round column mill. We're turning. Forward and reverse. And uh, ready to start making some chips. I need to run the, uh, the reamer up the guts to clean up the taper. But other than hardened. that, I've got a reamer for it. Uh, is that hardened, the quill? I, I don't know. There's a bit, a bit of crap in there, so yeah. it'll clean up nice. And uh, how good is this? So even with full welly on it, it's returning back to the same spot. Once we've got this clamped up, we'll do some measurements on it and give you some final readouts on it. But uh, as far as a, sit, a kit goes, oh, look at this. The cleaning fairies. Oh, he's just cleaning his tools, not my mill. Oh, well. Cleaning the ones that you uh, spilled stuff on. <laughs> I didn't spill it. <laughs> Goodness gracious me. Buy the man dinner and he talks about spilling things for the rest of the day. Uh, no, that's an awesome effort, Bruce. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And uh, it's been a good, um, uh, good, little good project. Good production here today. With, yeah. Uh, lots of ideas being thrown backwards and forwards. Yeah, it has I been think a fun we've got one. A pretty pat on down pat now. Yeah, yeah. The idea here is obviously to try and keep the bill of materials low so that the price to you is as low as we can make it. And if that means you buy a piece of bar locally and save some of the shipping on it, this piece can sit in a five kilo or three kilo uh, airbag quite nicely with all the bearings and the cut piece ready to just attach on. So yeah, all of that has been to help you guys. So add your name to the list.